This next subject is one that's quite difficult. How do you approach a diagnosis in contact B-scan ultrasound? I can't tell you how many times people have asked me, well, how do you make a diagnosis? And they'll take the probe, put it on the human eye on the lid, and try to make a diagnosis instantaneously. It just doesn't work like that. You have to spend the time going around looking at each quadrant, coronally and sagittally, remembering in your mind the cross-sections that you have created, and actually beginning to anticipate what the image will look like if you move the probe one way or another. This anticipation of being able to contemplate what the image would look like before you see it means if you're accurate, you'll probably be able to make the diagnosis quickly. In other words, if you know what the inside of the eye looks like topographically, you should be able to anticipate the image that you're going to get if you change the position of your probe. It's sophisticated, it takes some time, and I recommend that most people use clear media cases, a partial retinal detachment involving perhaps the temporal portion of the globe, where the nasal portion is attached. Try to use ultrasound before you use the indirect ophthalmoscope. And see if you can create a retinal drawing of the topographical shapes and patterns inside the eye before you look. This becomes increasingly difficult as the abnormalities that you're looking at become more asymmetric. For example, diabetic traction retinal detachments. They often involve some areas and leave other areas completely normal, ultrasonically at least. And yet you want to be able to draw a complete retinal drawing of the interior of an eye, especially when it involves the area close to the macula. So I use all clear media cases for teaching and I ultrasound as many patients as I can so that I can look inside and judge my quality of three-dimensional thinking constantly. So how do you approach a diagnosis? Recognizing that the concepts are critical, real-time, grayscale, and three-dimensional thinking. I prefer to use movies and store them. Most storage up to now has either been with thermal paper, in the old days it was Polaroid, or computer printouts, or, in some situations, digital images in movie formats. And I prefer movie formats, and that's what you're going to find in this library following these lectures. Movie segments to depict what it looks like in real time, with real grayscale, and with your three-dimensional thinking to make a diagnosis. I can't tell you how many times physicians and technicians have asked me with a still image, a single still image, Dr. Fisher, would you look at this ultrasound and tell me what the diagnosis is? And I always ask them the following questions. And it is an approach to a diagnosis that I'm aiming at. First of all, who is it? Do we have the images of the correct patient? Secondly, where is it? Where was the probe and what is the view? And finally, what is it? What is the acoustic impedance mismatch pattern most conformed to? So when you're approaching a diagnosis, take your time. Look at each quadrant, both coronally and sagittally. Try to anticipate what the image will look like next if you move the probe. If you can do that, you're really beginning to understand three-dimensional thinking. And finally, these are images which are consistent with, but not diagnostic of, pathology. Just like OCT, we tend to equate the examination and image quality with the actual pathology. It's not that way. We are using a device to image. And like your radiologist friends have learned long ago, it is better to say consistent with than diagnostic of.